So this is a real treat for the channel. We're back out with Big Sexy Matt O'Dell and we're going to try today to go through some of those tests that are going to be required for AM2 and AM2S. And which one are you going to pick out first that we're going to have a go at? So in particular we've got three phase board. Yeah. So we can do the um, earth bolt impedance. Yes. The external earth bolt impedance and then the PFC. Yeah, so th they're really crucial for AM2S, AM2 and well, if AM2E if you're doing the experience route as well. And we're going to make sure that we don't miss out a part, especially now we've got a three phase board because yeah. often at colleges they're working on single phase installations aren't they yes yeah so it's the, it's the three phase experience that maybe our, our learners don't always get the uh, the hands-on experience with yeah so we've got permission in order to isolate the supply here and we're going to go through it in the correct process which means we're going to yeah. knock off first of all the breakers before doing the main switch we're going to remove the cover and then we're going to show first of all external air fault loop impedance and then prospective fault current yes okay so you knock some breakers off then for me Matty. okay and so we've got the single phase breakers here so we'll start turning those off and so you can start seeing some lights go off. Yeah, I'll just show that because we're working in the world's most terriblest place, aren't we, today? Look at that. Okay, so yeah, whips them off. So just do the single phase. So the lighting's just gone off in here. Do you, do you want them to stay on just for now? No, no, we'll turn everything off. We'll do it properly. And so then we've got our three phase breakers. So that's a, a blower, a compressor. Okay. Three phase supply to another board there, to the office board. We've turned off a lot of the local loads as well, so we're not yeah. actually got loads of stuff on full load on for the breakers, and then obviously we can do the... And so, um, that looks like all the loads have been taken off. Yeah, and we're going to do so, the main switch, are so we now? So now it's quite happy just to turn the, the main switch off. Okay, so we're going to get the cover off and we'll look at doing these tests Matt described at the start of the video. Okay. So the board's off, the cover's off, and we're now going to carry out the external air fault looping pin. Just remind me why I'm going to disconnect the earthing conductor, which is here. Okay, so yeah, so it is the main earthing conductor. So if we was not to disconnect it, then we'd be uh, having a problem with parallel earth paths via sort of like the extraneous conductive parts through the bonding and, and stuff like that. So we want to know the external earth bolt loop impedance. And so by removing this earth, that is just the external, nothing internal. Okay, and we've got an earthing range, as I said, of TNCS. Yes. Yeah, so can... what's the maximum reading for that for the external? On a PME or TNCS, it's 0.35 ohms. Okay. Okay, so earthing conductors out, we're just gonna drop this off. All right, so yeah, we've got just the earth out. Still just... care, because obviously the bottom side of this is live. It is live, There yeah. is no remote isolator here. You might find in AM2, AM2S, there might be another isolator that you can actually turn this off before removing it, but we're in the real world here. So they're now live at the bottom of that switch. Yeah, yeah. And it's red, yellow, blue, and not brown, black, gray. And we're gonna set oh, up God. our instrument now in order to carry out that external earth fault loop impedance. So we've set our Mega MFT 1730 up to LPE, and you're gonna do it on the three lead low, and that's what you've selected to do it on. We could have done it on high, because there's no RCDs, but you think that this will probably be the standard practice to get used to, Matt, is that right, when I we've got so, so many uh, RCDs around um, that we go for the low setting, is that okay? Yes, yeah. Right, okay, do you want a probe on for me so we can see the... Okay, so we've got the section? exposed, disconnected earth there, so we'll get a good, get a nice good connection onto there. And then we've got the neutral terminal here, yep. and then we've got our three phases there, so let's just move that one out of the way. So again, it's an automatic test, so go onto the neutral terminal first, and then we'll just probe onto the first line conductor. And as you can see there, the machine is automatically detected voltage, and it takes a few seconds. Because we're on the low uh, one, yep, that's fine. Yeah. So we'll persevere and wait for our result. So as you can wow. see there, what point no eight? That's it. We're finished. Pack up. And we're ready to go. Is that right, Matt? No. So that's on one of the phases. So obviously there's three phases. So we'll just repeat that same process on the next phase. Okay. So again, because we're going between neutral and the phase, it's detecting a single phase voltage. So I think it's about 240 volts in here. Of the three readings we take, which one are we going to record? So it's just the highest reading. Okay. So we've got remember we got 0 0.08. Now we've got 0 0.09. So that's, that's now it. the highest one. And then we'll probe back on. If you notice, every time I physically take your probes back off I in take, the right order, I yeah. take them exactly off. Take the same yeah. as we do for obviously yeah. supply polarity and safe isolation. Yeah, right. 0 0.08 of an ohm. So okay. we've carried out the external fault loop impedance test there. We've got three readings. You said you're going to record the highest one in your test paperwork. 
Yeah. Okay, we'll remove the earthing conductor. Just remind me again why we removed that. So purely for parallel earth paths, we want the external earth fault loop impedance. And yeah. so that is the external earth that goes back to the supply transformer. Good. So that is the that is the one that has to be removed. Okay, we're going to move on in a second to do prospective fault, fault current. current. Yeah. yeah. We've reconnected the uh, earthing conductor just there because obviously we need all the parallel earth paths in order to do our prospective earth fault and short circuit current. So we're going to start off by doing our prospective earth fault current. I see you've set your instrument there to two lead high and you're over there. Is that on PE? Uh, is that uh, LPE? LPE? Yeah, okay, on the actual mega 1730. Okay, if you want to probe on. Okay. We're not expecting this necessarily to be a reading we use and we'll explain that later on in the video when we go through doing between line and neutrals and then we'll have a little chat at the end and the little rule of thumb we'll yeah, suggest. Yeah. Okay, okay so. so get our good connection onto the earth bar there. Yeah. And again, it's on the two lead high, automatic test. Okay, so we're gonna go through this and we've got to remember these, but not necessarily worry so too much. Okay. Phase one was 2.3. Okay, that's 2,320 amps. amps, okay. Yep. Phase two. Okay, 2,130 yeah. 2, amps, okay. And then phase three. Two point one. Okay, so we're going to go on now and do the similar test, but this time between the line conductors to the neutral, and then we'll have a little chat about this rule of thumb. Is we're going to turn it over. So onto that's now to uh, LL and LN. Yes, and, and we're on two lead. Does it mean we now have to change our leads in the back of the instrument as well? Yeah. So so again, um, as lo this time we're going to be using these two um, leads here. So in this case, we're just going to use the um, the red and the black. Okay, so yeah, that's a key point to mention because sometimes people change their leads around in there, don't they? Yeah. So we're gonna now just be using our two leads. Yeah, so so again, we're just gonna probe onto the neutral conductor yep. and then onto the line conductor. And again, you can see it's picked up a voltage, a voltage all, there. As we're testing there, and then we come back. It should come through a little quicker, it has. So that's 2,720 amps. amps, okay. Again, we'll again, that's phase one, so we'll make a note of that. We'll go on to phase two. Again, there's the voltage picked up. Okay, so Sometimes you have funny things like that happen where... So that's uh, 1,972, amp. yeah, 70 amps, yeah, sorry, apologize. So we suggested throughout that video, there is a rule of thumb when we're doing a three phase supply. And we know at college, often you're working on single phase installations. And when you get to your AM2, AM2S, AM2E, it all can be a bit confusing, but we're gonna solve that confusion now. Of all the readings we got, we look at the highest one, am I right in thinking, Matt, That's between it. our line and neutral. Yeah. And we do mathematically what with that before we record it? So so we simply, it's easy calculation, just double it. Okay, always gonna take the highest reading and double it yeah. through and record it on our test paperwork because what could we have as a fault in a three-phase system? So so what we've done is, we, is we, we, the, me the measurements we have took is if, if it's between sort of earth and phase and, and or neutral and phase, but the worst case would be if it was between phases. Yeah, so in other words, a fault was between a couple of line conductors yeah. or three line conductors we get the most amount of fault current the flowing yeah. and therefore we need to prove that our device can actually clear that fault yeah. okay so you'll be looking at the mains end and working out the prospective fault current of that device but when you're recording it on your paperwork you take your highest reading between your line conductor and neutral and double it through our reading was i think uh, roughly 2.7 2. 2.7 2. 2. someone so will correct us slightly but it's near enough 2.7 yeah. and you double that and your math suggests yeah, so that's how many just over five uh, five kilos. 5.4 kiloamps. Thank you very much, Matthew. Yes, he's managed to get through on the mass. So it's 5.4 kiloamps. Would be recorded on the test paperwork. Okay. And that's really important for AM2, AM2S, AM2E that you double that number. And people have actually dropped, you know, I don't suggest failed because you, you get minor marks as you go along. That's an easy one not yeah. to forget, yeah. isn't it? And, and again, just, just just to think about it, with, with the circuit breakers as well, they are rated at often 6 kiloamps or 10 kiloamps. So that does have an effect on, on the size of the of the type of circuit breaker you're using, whether it's a six kiloamp or a 10 kiloamp. Yeah, and we've looked at that in other video yeah. presentations yeah. as well. However, we're gonna carry on a little bit further because it could be that your AM2 and AM2S gets developed and your test instrument actually allows you to carry out between line conductors yes. and will give yeah. us that reading. So for this part of the video, we're gonna carry on and see what the actual short circuit between line conductors is. Yes, yeah. 
So we've kept the instrument in the same position here, but we're actually now going to be testing between the two line conductors. Uh, let's do that then, Matthew. So again, this time it's important to use the um, this setter, the, the, the setting with this one and this one here. Yep. Okay. So again, it's just set on the two lead high. Yep, exactly again. where we were before, and it did say, didn't we? We saw before it says L and L, doesn't it, yes. down there? Yeah. And so again, we just probe on to, so this this time we're gonna go between phase one and phase two, and okay. you can see there it picks up the voltage. And that's 3,280. Okay, we yeah, move so across, so we're gonna do so this And so then we'll go between phase two and phase three. Okay, yep. Yeah. People are saying this is nowhere near the one we recorded. We'll just explain that a little bit in a moment. So that's 2,790. That's it, and then we'll go between phase one and phase three. And that's 4,110. Now the thinking behind that is obviously we've got a TNCS earthing system here. Yes, yeah, we've got a neutral and earth connected together and all yeah. the rest of it. And we'll go into a bit more detail on that in a different video. We've just got to remember that rule of doubling through our readings that we suggested earlier. So thank you, Matt, for showing us that. And we believe that's key information done with your AM2, AM2S, et cetera. Definitely. So the, the end of the video, remember to double through the reading that you got when you tested between a line conductor and neutral, the highest value, and record it as a prospective fault current. As the, the, the qualification may be developed, it might be a case of they are allowing you actually to measure between two line conductors. And if that's the case, obviously you record the highest of those three readings we got there. Yeah. It wasn't exactly doubled through, was it? It, it wasn't exactly, but, but it's... Yeah, but it was... It was it's is a rule of thumb and again if you want more detail on that in the future we'll produce a video that can help you understand why that is as always what we've got to say at this bit man it's been a long time been, what, been what a we've got to months. say what have we okay. got to say okay i help, hope this video has been some help we do